It was May 1706, and the Duke of Marlborough had just won a great victory against the French and Bavarians at the Battle of Ramillies. It was the fifth year of the War of the Spanish Succession, and it had just claimed another casualty. A stray shot had fractured the skull of a British dragoon named Christopher Welch. The surgeon performed a delicate surgery to relieve the pressure on the brain, and it wasn't until afterwards that he made a startling discovery. The twelve-year veteran of the war and the previous nine years' war was, to the shock and surprise of everyone in the room, a woman. The extraordinary story of Christian Kit Kavanaugh is history that deserves to be remembered. Born in Ireland in 1667, Christian Kavanaugh was the daughter of a wealthy farmer and brewer. She was brought up with a good education and had a hand in taking care of the family farm where she learned many skills that would serve her later. Notable among them, she was an accomplished horseback rider. But her father had chosen the side of James II in the 1688 War of the Two Kings, and after the Williamites, supporters of William III, forced James to flee, her family's lands and property were confiscated. Kit went to work for her aunt who owned a pub in Dublin. She had a great head for business and inherited the pub after her aunt's death. She married one of her aunt's employees, a man named Richard Welsh, and by 1691 they had a loving marriage, a thriving business, and two children with a third on the way. But one day, Richard left on a business errand and did not return. She and her friend searched, but could not find his whereabouts. Afraid that he had been robbed and killed, Kit was heartbroken. It was another year before she received word. Richard had not been robbed, but had been, as with many young men of his time, tricked and pressed into the army, and was in Europe fighting against the French in the War of the Grand Alliance. Her options were limited. She could stay where she was, hoping that he would someday return home, or she could follow him to war and live the squalid life of a camp follower. But Kit, a woman of strong will, came up with a third option. She left her children in the care of her mother, dressed in some of Richard's clothes, cut her hair, and enlisted in the army, joining a company of foot. She planned to find her husband and buy his freedom. Using the name Christopher Welch so she could claim that she was searching for her brother, Kit was off to war, fighting on the side of William III, the same king her father had opposed. She was clever and scrupulous, hiding her gender. She had a slight build, so her breasts were easy to conceal. Soldiers of the day slept in their uniforms, medical care was cursory, and her examination was no more than a quick inspection for pox. She even managed to urinate beside her comrades using what she described as a silver tube without being discovered. Her comrades did not seem to suspect her. She turned out to be a good soldier, owing largely to her intelligence and education. But the life of a soldier was regimented, and she found it nearly impossible to effectively search for her husband. The War of the Grand Alliance, also called the Nine Years' War, was a conflict between an alliance of Great Britain, the Holy Roman Empire, Spain, and the Duchy of Savoy against Louis XIV's France, a war that spanned the world, including North America and India. Kit fought as an infantryman in the 1693 Battle of Landen, a stinging defeat for William and the British, where she received a musket wound to her ankle. She seemed less concerned with the wound than with concealing her sex from the surgeons. A year later, Kit was with a group of foragers who was captured by a French patrol. They were only held for a short while before they were exchanged, but the risk for Kit was discovery as they took the prisoners' uniforms away. Once again, she managed to hide her secret but soon she would be facing an odd challenge. Like other soldiers, Kit would occasionally go to a pub in town. There, both to relieve boredom and to maintain her disguise, she had begun flirting with a girl from a local village. Kit was surprised when the girl developed feelings for what she believed to be an Irish infantryman. And while this created an issue in itself, it became more acute when the girl came to her one day in tears. It seems that a sergeant from another company had sought her affections and upon being rebuffed had gotten rough with the girl. Kit, who seemed to never take anything lying down, was furious. The sergeant had not just insulted the girl's honor, but had also insulted Kit's honor. And against regulations, she went to him and demanded satisfaction, easily defeating him in a short sword fight where he cut her hand and she stabbed him in the groin. While there was sympathy, as the duel had been over a matter of maiden's honor, Kit had violated regulations and was jailed. Fortunately, the girl's father was a local burger and managed to arrange a pardon for Kit, but now there was another problem because the girl wanted to marry Kit. So Kit had to convince her that giving up her life and becoming a camp follower was a foolish idea. 
Discharged from her regiment, with a good reputation as a soldier and some fame from the duel, she was able to sign on with the Royal Regiment of Scots Dragoons. Dragoons were mounted soldiers who could fight as both infantry and cavalry, and the Royal Regiment was known for riding all grey mounts and so was called the Scots Greys. An able rider and a good soldier, Kip thrived in the regiment where she was often called the Pretty Dragoon by men who seemed to have no inkling of her secret. In fact, at one point, a prostitute accused Kit of being the father of her child, demanding support. Rather than reveal her secret to prove the woman wrong, Kit paid, thus further reinforcing her masquerade. She served with the Greys through the end of the war in 1697, which ended with the generally unsatisfactory Treaty of Ricewick, driven more by exhaustion rather than any side achieving victory. After the war, Kit returned to Ireland to find that her middle child had died, but that her mother and other two children were doing well. But she had not found Richard, and had little financial prospect, and appears to have decided not to contact them. War returned in 1701, when the Holy Roman Empire, the Dutch Republic, and Great Britain once again allied against Louis XIV over the crown of Spain following the death of the Habsburg Emperor Charles II. The War of the Spanish Succession would become another protracted and grueling war on the continent, and Christopher Welsh once again joined the Royal Scots Greys. This time, the British were under the command of John Churchill, the Duke of Marlborough. Kit was successful, making good money off of plunder, a privilege of soldiers in the era. She continued to be strong-willed, once costing a corporal an eye after she clubbed him in the face with the butt of her pistol in a fight over a pig. The Greys saw much action in the war, and Kit took a serious wound to the thigh at the 1704 Battle of Skellenberg, the treatment of which nearly resulted in her being discovered. The wound would cause her pain for the rest of her life. She was fit for action again a month later, in the Battle of Blenheim. It was a great victory for Marlborough, and had effectively knocked Bavaria out of the war. After the battle, Kit's life also changed in another surprising way. She saw a infantryman who looked awfully familiar, and after 13 years of searching, she had discovered her long-lost husband, Richard. Their reunion was, as you might imagine, somewhat awkward. And to make matters worse, having not heard from his wife for so long, Richard had promised to marry another woman. He once again pledged his loyalty to Kit, who had become fond of army life, and so they decided that he would give up the other woman and both stay in the army. They could still meet regularly without suspicion, since they claimed to be brothers. The ruse carried them through the indecisive campaigns of 1705, but in May of 1706, two massive armies, more than 120,000 troops combined, met at the Battle of Ramillies. Marlborough commanded a brilliant battle, a decisive victory that, along with other Allied victories, briefly looked like it might force Louis to sue for peace and bring an end to the war. But it was also the end of Kit's charade. Struck by a stray shell near the end of the battle, his, her skull was fractured. It had to be trepanned, meaning a hole drilled to relieve pressure. She survived what would have been a very deadly procedure in that era, but in the course of treatment the surgeon discovered her secret. Her comrades were absolutely stunned. She had been a soldier for more than a decade and none of them suspected, not even her tent mate, who recalled her taking responsibility for the prostitute's pregnancy. According to a biography purportedly written by Kit in 1740, her commander George Preston exclaimed, I always looked upon you as the prettiest fellow and the best man I had. Kit could not stay in the army, but her regiment still had an affection for her, and now revealed she and Richard could again live together as man and wife. She became a sutler, someone who forages for food and liquor and other amenities, and began selling her wares to soldiers. She was good at it, always having a good head for business. She made pretty good money, and she and Richard seemed to legitimately rediscover their affection. She had another child but it died in infancy. She remained as spirited as ever. When a smug officer struck one of her employees in a fight over a goose, she grabbed him by the collar and flipped him over so hard she broke his leg. And when she caught Richard with another woman, she drew a knife and cut the woman's nose off. Once, an officer mocked Kit after her horse was startled. Her pride hurt, she challenged him to a horse race. Knowing his horse was far faster than her horse, he accepted, including a substantial wager. As the race started, Kit turned her horse into his, kicked his foot from the stirrup, and pushed him out of his saddle, winning the race and the bet as his fellow officers cheered. But tragedy struck at the 1709 Battle of Malplaquet, a bloody battle, empiric victory for the Alliance, 
Richard was among the nearly six and a half thousand Allied dead. Kit searched the battlefield for his body, turning over more than 200 corpses before finding him to give him a proper burial. She was, according to all accounts, inconsolable. Kit continued with the army. She married another soldier who was then killed in battle in 1710. She had a relationship with Captain Ross of her old regiment of dragoons, and although they never married, she became affectionately known as Mother Ross by the troops. In 1712, she returned to England. Kit returned to Dublin, where she was reunited with her mother, who was age 100 and absolutely overjoyed that her daughter was still alive. Unfortunately, Kit's own daughter had died some years earlier, and her youngest child had been sent to a workhouse. The property and money that Kit had in Dublin was long since lost. She had to rely on the charity of friends and nobles that she had met during her military service to get by, though she was also granted a pension by Queen Anne. Kit went on to marry another soldier named Davies, who unfortunately turned out to be rather lazy and drained most of her funds away. Kit Cavanaugh died in 1739 at age 72 of a cold. Much of what we know about her comes from a book entitled The Life and Adventures of Mrs. Christian Davies, which was reportedly written by her personally, although the authorship is uncertain and the account might be exaggerated. By any measure, Kit Kavanaugh's life was a ripping yarn and an extraordinary adventure, and certainly history that deserves to be remembered. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The History Guy, short snippets of forgotten history between 10 and 15 minutes long. And if you did enjoy, please go ahead and click that thumbs up button. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions for future episodes, please write those in the comment section and I will be happy to personally respond. Be sure to follow The History Guy on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and check out our merchandise on teespring.com. And if you'd like more episodes on forgotten history, all you need to do is subscribe.